Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fine. I'm the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today. And we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you. And I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. The Holy Spirit will most definitely change everything about your life if you yield to Him. So tonight I want to take a look at what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit and the effect and the results of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Say, thank God for the Word. word. Shout as we turn to Luke chapter 3 tonight. (laughs) Praise God. Luke chapter 3, verse 15. Now, as the people were in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts about John. This is John the Baptist. I think the Baptist part we added later. He was a wild man. (laughs) And they were reasoning in their hearts about him, whether he was the Christ or not. So they actually thought this might be the Messiah. John, excuse me, Luke 3, 16. Thought I would throw you for a loop there. Luke 3, 16. Everybody knows John 3, 16, but they don't know Luke 3, 16. John answered (laughs) and said to all, I indeed baptize you with water. Thank God water baptism is an important part of the Christian walk. If you haven't been water baptized, you need to be water baptized. And every time we have a baptismal service, in our baptism, the Lord brought us, praise God. Y'all remember those early days we had to borrow other churches? I mean, their whole facility, we had to borrow the churches. Thank God we have some other friends in town that are pastors. They say, you can use ours, but you got to clean up. But now God brought us our own. Glory to God. I don't forget where I came from, and I stay thankful for where I am. John baptized with water, but look what he said. One, with a capital O, one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loose. Now, I want you to catch this. He's talking about Jesus, and he said, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Praise God. You might want to jot this down. Jesus baptized people with the Holy Spirit and fire when he was on the planet, and he's still in that business tonight. (laughs) I said he's still in that business tonight. He's baptizing people with the Holy Spirit and fire. Verse number 17, his winnowing fan is in his hand. I've asked my friend, Pastor Chris McMichael, to come back this year in March. He's going to come and talk to us, bring a bunch of his books that he spent three years writing on botany. Doesn't sound exciting until you hear him preach from it. And this is one of the verses he's going to preach on. So I'm not going to take time to preach on it tonight, though I want to. Pay close attention, though. What is Jesus doing? Baptizing people with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. See, the Holy Spirit wants to do a work on the inside of you. You can see it painted in this verse right here. He wants to burn out all the chaff that's in your life. Anything that's not really fruit-bearing for the kingdom, the Holy Spirit wants to burn it out of your life. Now, you have got to make room for Him to do that. You do. I noticed this, and I want you to catch this. We're going to face fire one way or another. Did you catch that? Either the Holy Spirit fire, that's the box I'm checking, yes, or unquenchable hellfire. I don't want that one. And I don't want that one for you or anyone I've ever known or ever will know. I don't want you going to hell. If you're watching my TV, listen to me. There's no reason to go to hell, but you got to repent and you got to call on the Lord Jesus Christ and you got to follow him. And when you follow him, here's what you're going to find out. He's got a gift he wants to give you. Yeah, the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, thank God. God. Yeah, it's best to be baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit than to face hellfire. Do you agree with that? Yeah, some people are afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Go down to verse 21 here in Luke chapter 3. 
When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, don't you think you ought to do what he did? Well, he was baptized. Have you been baptized? Like I mentioned, you need to be water baptized. He was water baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. Whoa. And the Holy Spirit, who? The The Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. So it just came down nice and the Holy Spirit, he came on Jesus. And a voice came from heaven. You have the triune God right here. God the Father speaking from heaven. The Holy Spirit coming on Jesus the Son. And the form, <laughs> praise God, bodily form coming right down like a dove on him. And the voice from heaven said, you are my beloved Son. In you I am well pleased. Glory to God. Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I follow Jesus. Do you? I'm called by God, Ephesians 5, 1, to imitate him. Yeah, so if he was baptized in water and he had the Holy Spirit come upon him, praise God, we ought to do the same. This verse tells us something other, another little piece of information that's important to know. What qualifies you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Well, you got to repent of your sins. You ought to be water baptized, and you might, be, you might get a double dose. You might get filled with the Holy Spirit right then on the spot. I've even heard of people being filled with the Holy Spirit when they, before they were even water baptized. Before they could even fill up the tank and get them dunked. They already got baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's the blood of Jesus that qualifies you for the Holy Spirit's baptism. Well, if I follow Jesus and Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit, why wouldn't I be baptized with the Holy Spirit? Now, I know some people say, well, that's not what that says. Well, Luke 4, 1, just a few verses later after the genealogies there, here's what you see. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. See, being filled and being baptized are interchangeable words here. So Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you? Something to think about, isn't it? Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, we're not going to break all that down. That's very interesting and something you could look at another time, what happens in the wilderness. Jesus shows us how to resist the devil. It's really cool. But tonight, my assignment is to really let this verse ring out in your ears because here's the point. What? The point of being filled with the Spirit is not just so you can walk and talk in tongues. The point is, when you're filled with the Spirit, to then be led by the Spirit. Hey, are you listening tonight? We see the entire point of all of this. Uh, By the way, I would say this worked for Jesus. Wouldn't you? When he was filled with the Holy Spirit, now he's led by the Holy Spirit. It worked for him. Don't you know that? If it worked for him, do you think it would work for you? If it was good enough for Jesus, is it good enough for you? Well, who are you to say no? I want you to think about that for just a minute. Wow. I wrote that down. If it worked for him, I think it'd work for me. There, here's what ends up happening. Jesus became the authority that we ought to listen to concerning the Holy Spirit. That's why tonight I wanted to take this night right when we're starting the very first service here of the new year and talk to you about what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. Because I don't know about you, but my focus is on the King because he's soon to return. And I thought, what is it you want to get across to your people? Here's what it is. Do what I did. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and then be led by the same Spirit. Somebody say glory. glory. Go to Luke chapter 12 a few chapters later. Let's look tonight at what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 12, just kind of lightly elbow your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here tonight. (laughs) Are you seriously glad they're here? I'm glad you're here, praise God. Luke chapter 12, verse 11, of course on the screen is the New King James Version. It says, now when they bring you to the synagogues and the magistrates and to the authorities, don't worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. Now this was Jesus speaking to his disciples. I'm a disciple of Jesus. Are you? 
Okay, so what happens when you're drug in front of authorities or magistrates or synagogues or anywhere else and someone says, what do you have to say about Jesus? <laughs> you, you better have the Holy Spirit's help. Because Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit. Verse 12, Luke 12. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Oh, there's so many times in life you may not know what you're going to say. You may not know everything that's going to happen. You know you're going to have the victory. But let me say, here's how he's going to get you to the victory. In the moment of the heat of a battle sometimes, the Holy Spirit will give you the word to say at the right time. It might be when you're facing a sickness. It might be when you're facing persecution. But the Holy Spirit, He will not leave you alone. He will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. That tells me something. He may not be on my time clock. Well, Jesus, I'd sure like to know. Holy Spirit, I'd sure like to know two weeks in advance. But see, I never approach, I always prepare. I never approach this holy desk. And say, all I'm going to do is stay within the confines of what I believe the Holy Spirit gave me through my notes. Unless he tells me to. What I say is, have your way. In fact, I told him in my office, sing and worship. Be glad you weren't in there to hear. I said, I've made room for you. Do what only you can do. Say what you want to say. And if you've ever come here and you've heard an answer to something, let me tell you, that was the Holy Spirit giving you the answer. If you've ever sat here and thought, well, he's talking about me. I am. But don't get offended by that. Listen up and say, is this you, Holy Spirit? Pastor Jeremy Fowle here from Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas, inviting you to watch our weekly television broadcast right here on this channel. Accelerate Church is in Amarillo, and we offer services on Sunday, 10 a.m. and Wednesday, 7 p.m. We'd love to have you. If you can't be here in person, you ought to stream online at AccelerateChurch.cc. That's our website. You can find all our information there. We offer weekly children's ministry, high school age ministry, college age ministry, and more at Accelerate Church. You better pay attention when the Lord's talking to you. And you better not get offended because the Lord is going to use me to speak to you many times. And it's going to be the Lord. It's not going to be my pea brain telling you something. Now you want to get into real specifics, you call and come meet me. I'm not going to give you anything other than the Word. I'm never going to tell you, hey, do something different than the Word. Well, Pastor, I'm, I'm thinking about leaving my spouse. Not God. You stood at the holy altar before God Almighty and you made a commitment to Him that you're going to do this till death do you part. It is not God or the Holy Spirit leading you to go do your own thing. Come on now, somebody. People say, are you talking about so and so? Why don't you just think about yourself for a minute? Because when that time comes when your spouse makes you mad, is that going to be your thing? Well, I'm out of here. You're out of here. you got to answer to God for this thing. You don't got to answer to pastor. You got to answer to God Himself, who joined you together. Hey, remember this. I say this. I just had a wedding ceremony uh, Sunday. I did officiated. And I said, "Whatever God joins together, let no man put asunder or split apart." And I looked at the bride and the groom. I said, "That means both of you." And I've said that to every bride and groom when I've officiated. That means y'all. Of course, it means any witnesses out here, but it means you. You're in the marriage. Well, you don't know what I've been dealing with. What, what, what does that got to do with your commitment? You didn't know storms were going to come up? I am really hitting a vein right here. Somebody said, the Pastor, did someone talk to you? No, the Holy Ghost did. Maybe it's for you watching right there, and you better turn. Because, see, let me tell you something. Sin on top of sin doesn't make you right with God. At some point, you got to turn from that, and you got to follow Him. I'm preaching real good tonight now. Maybe I should have waited to receive the offering at the end. I don't know. I just know this. You say, I don't know what to say about it. The Holy Spirit will tell you, but does he have any time in your life? Are you in fellowship with him at all? When's the last time you took 20 minutes solid and prayed in the Holy Ghost? Ask yourself this. Some people might say, well, I've done that a lot. You know, I'm not at home with you. I don't know. Hopefully you're spending hours praying in the Holy Ghost. But the truth of the matter is, uh, your lifestyle ends up telling on you. Your lack of enthusiasm, even on a Wednesday night in a remnant church, ends up telling on you. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying, it ends up telling on you. And my, same with me as a pastor. It ends up telling on me if I don't spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. 
But when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I get up here and I start saying things and people are like, oh, ah, oh, whoo, my goodness. Others jump up and shout. Others fold their arms and get angry. I, I, I don't get, the Holy Spirit's the one dealing with you. I have no idea what you're doing at home, but he knows. <laughs> he sees everything. You mad at me, Pat? No. Is the Holy Spirit mad? No. He's trying to get you to follow God all the way through to the end. I got to move. I got to move. Because I'm, we're looking at what Jesus says about it. Here's what he said. The Holy Spirit will teach you in the very hour what you ought to say. Now, now hang on. If he's going to teach you in the hour, you better make sure you've been practicing hearing what he's speaking. See, some people, they want to be told exactly in the hour and in the crunch time what word they need to speak, but they haven't given the Holy Spirit any time last week. How is that going to work? Wow. You know, if my wife calls me, of course, we know we have our cell phones and our names are safe, but let's say she calls me from a different number. This happened one day in 2008. She called my cell phone from a different number. I didn't answer. I didn't know who it was. Called back, so I answered, hello. Hey, as soon as she said, hey, I knew exactly who it was. Didn't recognize the number, but I knew exactly who it was. I know her voice. We talk every day. But if this had been someone, let's say, somebody I went to high school with, and, and a, a young lady I went to high school with called me just randomly, hey, I, I would not know that voice. I would be like, oh, hey. I mean, if they told me who they were, but there's no way I'd recognize that voice when I've had no fellowship. I haven't even listened at all. This is for somebody. Because when you're in this crunch time, you have a promise in the Word, the ultimate authority that there is, the parent force of the universe, the Word says, the Holy Spirit will teach you in the very hour what you ought to say. But I'm telling you, you've got to practice hearing Him in the small stuff. Wow. You see, I'll just tell you this. Marriage is a great example of this. You need to ask the Holy Spirit what the problem is because a lot of times your spouse ain't going to tell you, gentlemen. What is it? We're always, men are always like, what what, what happened? (laughs) Of course I was routine giving you no time last 24 hours. What on earth is wrong with you? I don't get it. Could you tell me what's going on here? I don't know what's up. This is real talk, and some of you men are going to act like it's not. Again, I'm not at home with you, but let's be honest. Men aren't always the best communicators. So sometimes, uh, the women are about to run in here, but, <laughs> but let me tell you, men, can I help you out? The Holy Spirit will help you. And then women, having patience with your man, let me, tell you, let me explain this to you. The Holy Spirit will help you. But have you even consoled him or asked him? Here's what I'm convinced. People want to do what they want to do and want the Holy Spirit to mop up the mess. But he wants to talk to you before you go to work. Before you say what you're about to say. That way you don't create another big hairy mess. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is what revival looks like. (laughs) We see then that the Holy Spirit wants to teach us what to say. Write this down. What you say matters. That's why the Lord's given us the Holy Spirit, so we know what to say. Wow. John chapter 7, i got to keep moving. There's a lot that Jesus said here. John chapter 7 and verse 38, Jesus said, He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart, King James says belly, will flow rivers of living water. Glory to God. Living waters is supposed to be flowing out of you. What does that mean? Life is coming out of you, not death. Right. Woo! Say, he's teaching you what to say. So you ought to know right now, it's going to be something that's living water, not dead. Stagnant. Right. You ever passed by a stagnant body of water and taken a big sniff? A sniffer Smells horrible. You don't sit there and sniff that. But when living water's flowing by, praise God. Life, and life abundant is there. Praise the Lord. That's supposed to be coming out of you. What? Living water. Everybody say living water.
Praise the Lord. So see, uh, this will also help you out. I didn't know I was going to talk so much about marriage, but obviously the Lord's dealing with someone. If you just smile real big, I'll, I'll believe it's someone watching my TV or listening by radio. Uh, he's talking to all of us. But you ought to speak life over your spouse, not death. She about killed me with that attitude. Hey, shut up. Speak life. Here's a clue. When's the last time you spoke the word of God over her? You're washing her with the word. That's part of the husbandly duty. And she don't have to hear you do it, by the way. If she lends you your ear, great. But if not, still do it. Still do it. And timing helps a lot. If you can tell, you know, the kid's been at her all day and she's agitated, sit down, I'm going to read you the word. <laughs> Brother, just go to the bathroom and do it in there, okay? Thank you, Pastor, for being so real. Thank you for helping us. This is what Jesus said. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning what? The Spirit. Whom those believing in him would receive. You catch that? These were people that already believed in Jesus. And they would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. Good news. Jesus has been glorified. He went and took a seat at the right hand of God where he's sitting today, ruling and reigning at the right hand of God. Well, what does that mean for me, preacher? That means that the Holy Spirit is available to those that believe in Jesus. The real question is, do you want him? Pastor Jeremy Fowle here from Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas, inviting you to watch our weekly television broadcast right here on this channel. Accelerate Church is in Amarillo and we offer services on Sunday, 10 a.m. and Wednesday, 7 p.m. We'd love to have you. If you can't be here in person, you ought to stream online at accelerate.church.cc. That's our website. You can find all our information there. We offer weekly children's ministry, high school age ministry, college age ministry, and more at Accelerate Church. Holy Spirit is available to those that believe in Jesus. The real question is, do you want him? That's the real question. When you do, it shows up as this rivers of living water flowing out of you and I. Praise the Lord. Rivers flowing. Everywhere you go, life, 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 and life abundantly. Praise the Lord. A few chapters later, John 14, Jesus said, verse 25 of John 14, these things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the, not a, the helper, capital H. King James says the comforter, capital C. In the Greek, though, this is the word parakletos or paraclete. This means an intercessor. So I'm going to say that. But the, inter the intercessor. The Holy Spirit. That also means the consoler. See, you go through something and it's difficult and it stretches you emotionally in every other way. You better be spending time praying in the Holy Ghost because your consoler, the Holy Spirit, that's what he's called. Your advocate, another word, basically we would use a modern word, would be attorney. He's going to give you some counsel. Whew, come on, somebody. Well, Jesus is our advocate, but right here, one of the definitions of paraclete literally means an advocate. Glory to God. Here's what it literally means, to be called to one side. So, the one called to your side, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, John 14, 26. And he'll bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. Now, I've just got to tell you, I'm going to leave this scripture up for a moment. This word helper means a whole lot more than just a helper. You see, we almost tend to get arrogant. I'm not, I'm not me or you necessarily, but I'm just saying in general, oh, he's just a helper. He's just helping me. Well, this is a big deal. This is not just a little help. This is the helper. But when you really study the parakletos word, here's what you find out. It's a military term. I did not know this. I mean, I'm, I, 
I've studied it, so I've known it for a while. I don't remember when I learned it. But I didn't know this at first. When the very first time I heard this as a kid, I didn't know this was a military term. You see, this refers to Greek warriors. The years ago, would go into battlefield in pairs. When the enemy would attack and they were really facing hard fighting, they would stand back to back to cover each other's blind side. Wow. What am I telling you? The Holy Spirit is your paraclete. <laughs> when you couple with this, Listen to me. The armor of God doesn't have anything to cover your backside. It's because you've already got your paraclete. Woo! You've got armor. By the way, can I ask you something? How come your armor don't have any dents in it? You, I mean, have you been battling anything? Come on, somebody. Yeah, I mean, you talk big in church, but I'm saying, I see your armor. It's shining like the noonday sun with not a dent anywhere. <laughs> but we're in battle. I said, we're in battle. Anybody have any dents on their armor? Three of you. Okay, praise the Lord. Here's what I like. When you got your paraclete, you ain't really got to worry about what's going on behind you. You just keep going forward. You just keep going forward. You keep going forward. Praise God. You got a paraclete. Say, I've got a paraclete. And let me tell you what Jesus said. He teaches you all things. He's your teacher. Glory to God. There's no better teacher in this world than the Holy Spirit. He will bring the word to your mind, and that is so important if you want breakthrough. Because when you're facing battles and you're facing situations and things that emotionally drain you and you feel like you don't have any strength, you need a word from God. And the paraclete, you know what he's going to do? He's going to bring the word of God to your mind. He's going to drop it in your mind. A scripture is just going to rumble from down deep on the inside of you. Praise God. And that will get you through any storm. The cursing's not going to do it. Well, I don't feel it. Who cares how you feel? Do you think warriors in the battle feel like fighting? Do they even ask that question? Do I feel like fighting today? No. Well, here's your other option. Die. American Christians, well, I don't feel it today. So you think that's okay for you to be sassy because you don't feel like being a Christian? You've got to ask yourself a question. Is Jesus really your Lord? Are you really listening to your paraclete who's trying to help you? You see, if you'll stop before making a bigger mess, stop and ask the Lord, what is the word on the matter? And the Holy Spirit, he's not going to leave you helpless. He's going to tell you. He's going to show you. Right in the middle of a battle, right when you need it, he's going to give you exactly what to say. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite <laughs> you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you Absolutely. and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.